Hello everyone and welcome to this demonstration of our inventory tracker database template. Now, this application, let me just go into a little bit of background here. This is a database template, which means it's an almost fully, it's, it's an almost full application. Enough to give you the idea, enough to be used sort of as is, but it is meant to be added onto and customized. So this is basically for any business that does any type of it manages any type of inventory, whether it's a warehouse, whether you have uh, an eBay business. And the nice thing, you might ask yourself, well, why should I purchase a template? I can buy anything online or um, use this web program. It's a good question. The good thing about templates is, as I said, these are meant to be customized. Access is an incredibly powerful tool, most overlooked tool in Office 365 or Microsoft 365. And so, when you buy commercial software, you get what you get. You have to just shop for whatever works the best for you. You're not going to get it perfect. With customized software, you can get it perfect. You can get it customized down to the very finest detail. And that is what templates offer you. So I'm going to take you through some of the features. Now, this is meant to be pretty generic. And again, that's the point. We want to be able to customize and Flesh this out if you know access, know someone who knows access, or you can hire someone like myself <laughs> to customize it for you. So anyway, let's get into the uh, basic functionality. I'm going to start in the middle here because these are the management categories, products and inventory, vendors and reports. So let's go to categories. And again, categories, hopefully self-explanatory, um, tables, adapters, office supplies. I can add another one. Um, cell phones, I guess that would fall under electronics, so would laptops, but in any event, that's how we manage categories. I can manage vendors. I can make uh, the laptop company, nice creative name. Of course, I can also delete. Okay, so let's go out of this screen and uh, we'll go to reports. Let's do products and inventory. So I'm gonna, we're gonna enter a brand new product, um, brand new laptop, the, the Dave Top, 5,000, let's say, um, that's going to be category laptops. The vendor where we get, get it from is going to be the laptop company. We're going to set a unit price of $625. Now, uh, we'll start with five initially in stock, but the reorder level, um, in fact, let's, let's reorder when we get down to five. So th this, that's how, how low we have to get in inventory before, oh yeah, we better reorder and get more of these in stock. So, uh, and again, we can add or remove items here too. Now, notice when I press the delete button by the USB-C cable. This record cannot be deleted or changed because transactions includes related records. Basically, what this is saying is, wait a minute, you've sold this. You've got transactions. You've got invoices with this item on it. You can't just delete it. Again, that, that can be changed as well. And of course, I see we've made it inactive. Maybe they're not selling very well. Um, but that's kind of a protective thing so you don't end up going into negative inventory and, and uh, deleting items that you can't print on invoices anymore because the item's deleted. So that's the manage products window. Okay, I think oh, we'll, we'll view transactions. Let's go to that next. We could do, you can see all the transactions in, in and out, basically meaning uh, bought or sold. The quantity, vendor, category, the item, the date in which it happens, which defaults to today's date. Let's say I want to do a search of all transactions from uh, first six months of the year. Press the search button. And let's see, we want to go further into storage devices. And then from within that, I want to go into items. I only want to see a USB. And so on and so forth. So you can... You can filter these with as many or as few of these search fields as you need. Now, let me go out. Let me go back out and clear the category and item. By the way, oh yeah, we can clear filter. So let's let's just go back to that. Um, let's just go back to June. If this gets us oh, only one item, okay. Let's go back a little further. Okay, and we can report on these results too. So I can click report results, and I'm going to get a report. Now this is fairly generic looking. Uh, but of course, again, like I said, it's made to be customized. Um, we can add custom co company logos. We can add all sorts of other fields, rearrange things, put all sorts of other filters if you need. 
Now, uh, again, I just want to note the quantity is in negative values for a lot of these because the, these are all sales. So they're outgoing. I use negative quantities because they result in inventory leaving. That could, of course, be changed. We could display this as a positive number anyway. So that, that's certainly possible. Okay. And we have the vendor name and uh, all that type of thing. So there's other reports, but we'll get to that. Let's go ahead and close this form and we'll go on to the enter transactions. And this is really the key part here. So let's suppose we got a, oh, I don't see the laptop in here. Oh, you know why? Because I think we did not make it active. That's why. So let's, um, let's go back to products and inventory. Laptop, we did not make that active. Okay. <laughs> That's why it wasn't showing up. See, there you go. Enter transactions. Here we go. So we got, a, we got a sales order. For 10 of these, for 10 of the Dave Top 5000s, you can see the unit price is 625. When I filled in 10, it, it, uh, access filled in the grand total. As a matter of fact, let's offer a discount of, uh, of 10%. You see it reflects the discount in that grand total. Um, I'll put a note. Thanks for your order. All right. And I will submit the transaction, although it's not going to work because it does not have enough inventory. We order 10. We only have five. So. We're going to need to order some first. So let's, let's actually, let's place an order for 25. It's going to be a big, uh, now, uh, well, let's say we are getting a um, uh, volume discount from our supplier. I did put 15, not 1,500. Okay. Uh, discount of 15%. And um, I'll put for note restock. And we will submit that. And the transaction successful. And when I click OK, you see the in stock went up to, went up to 30. So it added on to the original that we uh, we had five, we bought 25 more. Okay, now I think we're ready to go back to the sale, and um, we can go uh, a sale of 10. Uh, and and let's, let's go back to the discount and we'll submit transaction, transaction successful. And you see that in stock has now gone back down to 20. Let's do a sale for um, external hard drive. Now we're going to say we got a sale, we got a sale order for two of these. Now... The reorder point is 10. So let's keep that in mind. I, I do submit transaction. It, it will go through. I'm going to say this item is running low. Do you wish to reorder? I'm going to say no for now. The transaction successful. It's in stock. So we're below the reorder point. So again, you could make this so that it does reorder automatically. Um, I put it in here as a question. If we did the same thing for the ballpoint pen pack, Let's say we sell, uh, we have 15, we sell 12 of these. Uh, this time we will reorder. Now, the way I have it set right now is it will reorder the amount of the reorder level. So it will automatically reorder 10. So it looks like we're going to sell 12 and we're going to order 10. And it was 15. So that, yeah, that makes sense. It was 15. We order 10. It makes it 25 and we sold two. So 12, it brings it from 25 down to 13. So that, that all matches up. Okay, so that's the transaction itself. We'll close that. And the last thing here is the reports. Now, the uh, transaction search we already found, we already used. The only difference here is that the items are selectable from a list. So I can select all, I can walk, look all the transactions involving the Ethernet, 10 foot. And so, yeah, we see, uh, we see the Ethernet cables. Let's get a report for the... Um, for the Dave top, and you see this one has varying. This has 25 in because that's what we ordered, and then 10 out. Again, that's minus 10. It's the same report as before. It's minus 10 because that's the amount that was sold. So we can close this. There's one more report that we have built in here, and again, we can add all. If you're saying, yeah, but I want a report that does this and this and this and this, or I want to be able to uh, import large amounts of inventory by importing from Excel. Yes, we can do all of that. That is all possible. Again. Templates are meant to be customized, and that is the advantage you have. Yeah, you you know maybe pay $30, $40 for an off-the-shelf product, but again, your the features are what they are. If there's a bug, if there's a feature you need, you contact their support. Maybe they'll get to it in the next version in, in a couple of years. No more waiting. You need a change. You get the change right away, exactly the way you need it. Okay, so I'm going to finish up with this report here, items low in stock, and this is why I didn't reorder that one item. I believe it was, uh, was it the Dave Top? Yeah, it was, oh, no, it was the external hard drive. It was the external hard drive, and you can see, yes, I, that, that's why I didn't reorder this one, because uh, this shows items that are below, where the stock is below the reorder point, and so that's the type of thing you can, you can do with that. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our demonstration. If there are any questions, uh, 
feel free to contact us. Feel free to uh, send a message. And I hope you found this useful and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.